I have a super interesting video for you because I was a lucky, lucky girl and I got sent PR from Game Beauty. They sent me the Elemental Blast Electro Palette, the Harbinger Palette and the Cyberpunk Palette. They were kind enough to let me choose the palettes, so this is basically my choice. This is what I wanted to try from them and I'm very, very excited that you can now dig into the different tutorials. We're starting actually with this one, then we're doing Harbinger and the last look, the one that I'm wearing right now, is with the Cyberpunk palette. If you can't wait or you just already know that you love Game Beauty, you can now also save some money when you use my code. It's Ella Kinkley and it will save you 10% of your order on GameBeauty.com. Calm. I'm very, very thankful that they sent this to me, but I just want to say, just because I'm affiliated with them, just because I got them in PR, does not affect my opinion. So what I don't like, I will say that I don't like this. I will be very critical, as always, and I will tell you my honest opinion, no matter if there's an affiliate code, a failed link, or a PR deal going on. So take something to drink because some of these looks take quite a while and yeah, uh, let's start with the first look. So the first palette of this video is the Elemental Blast 05 Electro and this is a monochromatic purple palette. And of course, I also have some swatches for you. Sorry for the snowflakes, that's the only swatch sticker I currently have with nine spots. They are swatched on clean skin, no primer, whatever, but I had to build them up a bit to just get an even layer here. And I wanna do something punchy today, so you know what? Let's start with Thunder Furry, the darkest one here. That is more of a blue-based purple. And I apply this here in the outer part. Ooh. I just keep on packing this on and I don't blend too much because we will use lighter shades to blend that out. On my fluffy brush, I now go into Energy Recharge and I start here in the crease directly on top of the dark shade and I start blending. There is, by the way, some glitter on my brush. So if you see some specks, showing up it's not from the shadow that is my fault because this brush still has shimmer on it I've done this reverse blending technique from dark to light instead of light to dark in a while and i have to do this more i tap now into the shade stormborn with a even bigger brush or like the biggest for this look and that one goes right on top of this in the transition area on an even smaller brush, I now go into Static Charge. And that one I apply a little extra here on my inner crease part. I also go a bit on the lid here, just a tad bit. I love that with light shades like this, when you add them on top of something darker, instead of blending it from that light to the dark, you kind of give a neon effect. So my glitter glue is applied and I of course want to incorporate all three of the shimmers. And I'm starting with Mega Vault. That one goes here on top of the outside or the outer third. Of course, tap into Kyber. This, by the way, came broken and I was able to press it back in. But just to warn you, this is a shade that definitely has too much binding component to them. So this is kind of creamy thick, but also not. So it broke very easy and it came completely shattered. But again, since there was like a layer of foil on top, I was able to keep it in and then repress it. And I apply Kyber here on the center. And where I applied that light purple, that one I leave now with no shimmer because I want to connect that then with the inner corner. The lower lash and I'm adding now the ColourPop BFF Cream Liner in the shade Amethyst Hour, and this is basically a very light purple lilac-y shade. Do line my waterline with that, surprisingly. I'm already thinking what lip I'm going to pair with this, because if I do monochromatic, I want to do all monochromatic. I now go into the shade Vile Plasma, and I use this directly on the lower lash line, and I don't blend this all the way in. I basically stop around where, where my iris ends. Because I now go into Shockwave. You know, I always try to incorporate every single shade in the palette when I do first impressions. 
and I have a cat hair on my brush. I hate when that happens. So I take Shockwave and I start blending here, starting on the inner part and then just flicking it out. I'm now going into Blinded by Light and that one I apply first of all as inner corner, bring it a bit here on. And with a different brush, I now apply this here on that bare inner part and flick it like on that line to Kyber so that we have a good transition going on. Mm, I don't like how this looks on the inner corner. It's not enough for me, actually. I want to have something more intense. So to keep the monochromatic vibe, I'm taking the LH Cosmetics Sparkle Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade Blink. This has a transparent base, but it shifts blue and purple. So I take a brush and then I just grab the tiniest bit because this is fucking intense. And I just tap this here in the inner corner on top and very carefully blend that out. So it definitely shifts more blue than purple, but it still matches this vibe. But I'm also taking a bit of blinded light again, blinded by light again, and just tap this on top. And in case you have never tried these Allied Cosmetics Sparkle Things, they have five shades, and I know this is about game beauty, but oh, I love these so much. So to finish off this look, there is only brow bone highlight missing. As per usual, I forgot to apply this. So I go back into Blinded by Light and I apply this. Blinded by Light has some slight holographic specs to them that just reflect light very, very pretty. Not so much in a low light actually, because I do have my lighting panels here and I still see the holo specs, very pretty. So to complete this, oh, I have hair everywhere. To complete this monochromatic look, I'm also showing you what I used for blushes. Um, for cream blush, for example, I used Violet Vision from the Deeper Than Deep Curve Case from Made by Mitchell. My uh, powder blush is the shade Berry from the Dior Rosy Glow Line. Thank you, by the way, to, I sadly forgot who it was, Someone recommended this blush to me in a You Don't Need That Shit where I talked about the Clinique new um, Black Honey Lip and Cheek Oil. And I said, I want to have a powder version or a cream version of the Black Honey shade. And then I got a comment saying that uh, if you don't like the cheek pops, try out the Dior Berry blush. This is very close to this. And oh boy, this is a beautiful blush. To uh, match the highlighter in this monochromatic vibe, I went into the Bella Buteva Oracle Highlight Palette with the shade The Star. This is more blue than purple, but it kind of turns into a bit more purpley because of the blushes. And for lips, I applied the MAC Night Moth Lip Liner. And on top, I went with the Pat McGrath, what's it called? The Lip Fetish Sheer Color Lip Balm in the shade dark romance and by the way this shade is a very very beautiful dupe to the limited edition mood shade from chanel it's a bit more i don't want to say gray toned but it's a bit more cooler than mood and a bit more intense but I love the color anyway so um, depending on where you live the shade Mood is not available anymore check out the Chanel website I will put the link down below um, to see if it's still available otherwise the Pat McGrath one in the shade what was it Dark Romance is also very pretty so far with this very very first impression and my very first time now using a Game Beauty palette I am very impressed I love the formulation I don't want to say now that this is something that I do not have. That would be a complete lie, but I love the formula in general. I am a big, big fan of how these mattes do blend. That is not effortless. I don't want to say that in this palette, but it is good to do. It, it it's doable and it gives pretty effects actually. So when I started with Thunder Furry, I felt like there is a bit of a patch going on, but with the reverse blending from dark to light, I always experience a bit of patchiness, but that just is a trust the process moment. 
The shimmers are okay. Fiber for sure is my fave. Mega Vault is very pretty, but not as shimmery. And Blinded by Light, I think, is the surprise winner in this Electro palette. I have no clue how the situation is when the video is going up, but just today as I'm filming this, and today we have uh, June 11th, um, the Electro palette is sadly sold out on the Game Beauty website. But before I kind of finish the video, because it feels like I'm finishing the video, let's now head over to the looks two and three. And I don't know what Future Me is choosing, either Cyberpunk or the Harbinger palette. I have no clue. So for look number two, we're tackling the Harbinger palette. I have to admit, I have no clue what game that is. I never played it, so I, I, I don't really know. This is a 10 pan palette that is very oddly mixed, honestly. The color story is so odd, yet so interesting that I, I'm i excited to try it. I don't know if you can tell the shade here, Abyss. This originally looked like it had mold on it, but there are like these, these tiny specks of multi-chrome low light shades throughout that brown metallic that gives it just a very interesting twist so i totally want to incorporate this so here you have a look at the swatches what i find very interesting is that these first two these are let me just look back into the palette Lumi lumine or lumien i think it's Lum lumine or lumine maybe even and Dawn, they are not given it. They are very, very transparent, but when I move my hand in the light, at least Dawn has a very interesting shift, so I would call these definitely low light shades. This one is Abbas, the one with the weird specks throughout. It looks absolutely stunning with those specks throughout. And the other three metallics are very, very simple, plain metallics. And I'm actually starting with La Lament, Lament this time, L-A-M-E-N-T. And that one goes into the transition area. I could totally do the reverse blending again, but I tried the other way around this time. I'm now going into the shade Devour. And I don't know if I told you, but this blue here, Harold, this is a blue on a black base. This looks awesome. And Devour now goes right into the crease. Should have used a more stiff brush, but here we are now. I went back in the first shade and I just smooth over the edges. Back into Devour and build up the crease a bit more. But I feel like these also have a bit the tendency to be one of those shades that blend away quite easy. Now tapping into Doom, the matte black, and that one I apply here like a winged out liner shape and also in the crease. I very, very roughly smudge the Doom shade across the upper lash line just to give it a little tint. It doesn't have to be super precise by any means. These take a bit more work, in my opinion. Maybe it's my, cho my, my choose, my choice of brushes, but I feel like I have to dip back again, blend again, tone down, dip back, blend, to give, or to, to create a very smooth look. I don't mind that, but I wanna inform you. So I applied now my glitter glue and the choice of my shimmers is going to be very hard because I would love to use all of them, but I can't. So what I'm doing is I first take Herald and this one I tap here on the outer part on top of the black. Next up I go into Avis and I try to catch here on that little white dot, a couple shades. And this goes to the rest of the lid. And it's so funny how this brown now turns more into a multi-chrome brown to green shade. There is another glitter dot in that shade and that has more pink hues. And I picked up more of the pink for this eye. This is so interesting. You can kind of manipulate 
this brown shade a bit to your liking. Because I'm crazy, I now go into Wo, Woe, W O E, and I tap this here on top where both of these shades meet. I told you, I want to use every shade in that palette and 10 shades, honestly, is, is doable. So for the lower lash line, I'm using a liner on the waterline and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk liner. And I do apply this on my waterline. Kind of sloppy. I now go into Doom again and I apply this on the outer part and connect it with the upper lid here. And I wiped off the same brush, but I still want to have some of the black pigment in here. And now I go into Molten. And that one, I start here in the center, blending it inwards and then on top of the black outwards. For inner corner highlight, I'm going into the shade Dawn. Tap this on. That applies so much prettier than in the swatch. Last step, the brow bone highlight, I'm going into Lumine, Lumine, Lumine. I have no clue but I apply this here under the brow bone. And just like the Dawn shade, this applies much better with a brush and it's swatched horrible. So this is now the second finished look. For lips, I did something very simple. I just applied the Dior lip oil in the shade uh, pink because my lips are just a tad bit dry, so try, dry. So I just wanna give them some moisture thing going on and not bother them with the color or lipstick, whatever. Despite having a bit of a trouble in the beginning with this palette, I love this look. It came out completely different than I thought it would, especially when you just think about the swatches that I had did. That just shows me again that uh, you really should trust the process and swatches just do not tell it. They just do not give you the whole experience. You need to use them on the eye. And when it comes to the shades, I used everything now aside from Phantom, that silver, but honestly Phantom swatched quite good. So I don't think that there will be any problems with that. Now let's head over to my favorite palette out of all and the one that I'm the most excited about. Look number three with Cyberpunk. Last look for this video with the Cyberpunk palette. The one that I'm actually the most excited about. And you probably think, what the fuck? Why are you so excited about? Mainly because I love the game. Cyberpunk, I don't know, I played like three or four times and I just absolutely love it. I like the vibe they try to catch with this palette. To me, when I just think about the Cyberpunk game, I'm actually missing a bit more darkness, but just always think blacks you have probably in your collection, so you can add them, but I wish it would have been more dark in this palette. And the swatches, again, very, very weak, actually. But as I was proven in the look with Harbinger and also with the Electro one, just the swatches here do not tell it. Just wait for the application. So I'm very, very excited. In general, you have one, two, three, four, five mattes, three shimmers. And these two here, uh, Mod and Outcast, are shimmers, uh, no, not shimmers, they're mattes with these shimmery particles that basically just blend away. And I'm starting the look with Outcast, one of those mattes with the shimmer. And I apply this in my transition area, quite high up to the brow, actually. A tad bit of shimmer is visible, but it's really not that much. This shade is very, very sheer, so I am currently at my third layer. I personally don't mind that, that you have to build up shades. I much rather like it to be built up than being so pigmented that I can't blend it out anymore. Next up, I go into Neuromancy. I think that's English, correct? Where's my English? It's not here. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. That one goes here in the crease and also slightly in the transition area. Next up, I go into Cyborg. That one I apply here on the outer parts, in the crease and like outer V area. Then I tap into Mod, and that one I apply here on that inner crease part. Just a tiny bit, actually. I just want to give a like neon vibing line of neon 
Yeah, I'm so good at describing things. So my glitter glue is down. Now I go into Systopia. I apply this on the outer third. By the way, if you have never played Cyberpunk, um, I highly recommend it. It's one of the best games. Not my top three, but top five. Especially since the Phantom Liberty DLC came, this is like a completely new game compared to when it was released. Next up, I go on to 322 or 3022. And that one I apply on the rest of the lid. Wow. This is turning out exactly as I had it in my mind. On the part where the shade meets the Systopia one, I just swipe across Systopia so that I blur the line a bit. And then I tap back and just build it up a bit more. Honestly, I need a bit of darkness and contrast in this look, so I'm using the ColourPop BFF Cream Gel Liner in the shade Charmer. This is a deep aubergine color, or eggplant. I apply this in the waterline and on the like lower lash line, you know, where they just come out of the skin to have a very sloppy, kind of ready to be smoked outline. Now go into Neuromancy again and I do smudge that out here on the lower lash line with the shade. On a super tiny brush I now go into the shade Neon City and that one I apply here on the inner lower lash part bringing it in just a tad bit. Like with the light blue in the crease here I just want to have a pop of that neon. I now go into multi-pass and that one I apply as inner corner highlight here. For brow and highlight, I will later go on just with my face highlighter. And here we have now the finished look. For lips, I used the Lisa Eldridge Sculpt and Shape Pencil again in the shade 0N and I topped it off with the Yves Saint Laurent, what's it called, the Love Shine Candy Glow in the shade 6B. It's something with nude, I don't know. It's just a number here on the bottom, which is super odd. I thought actually that my favorite out of those three palettes is going to be Cyberpunk. But I'm honest with you, my favorite is Harbinger. So if I had to rank them, this is the one that I um, completely fell for. And I don't even know why, but just the look that came out of this is outstandingly stunning, or was outstandingly stunning. And I see myself reaching for this again, although I say that this is definitely more a fall winter vibe for me. The Electro palette is... Mm, I don't know. I think number two in this ranking, these are at the same spot because the Electro one has what I'm missing with Cyberpunk. This has depth, but this also has very interesting shades with the Kyber one, even Megavolt, and as I said, Blinded by Light, my surprise favorite of this palette. But because of the depth, because of the way how you can manipulate on how intense it is, I like this as much as Cyberpunk, but I wouldn't rate this higher than Cyberpunk because it's at the end still a monochromatic palette, so you are very limited in your looks. While Cyberpunk, of course, a lot has to do with the theming. I love the game, I love the story, that whole life of V that we are following along in that game just got me. I loved all the endings, the different ones, the... Like, none of it was really a happy end, in my opinion. It, it's just tragic. The palette inside is beautiful, but I myself am missing a bit of depth. So maybe if Cyborg or Neuromancy would have been much, 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 much darker version of this shade initially, that would be fine. Or instead of Replicant, that we can get something else. I don't know. I also probably wouldn't need mod or outcast. Well, mod, yes, but outcast, not so much. I always said in different videos that I hate pastels. I hate pastels, I hate neons, and these are neon pastels. It's just not my vibe. But in this palette, I have to say, though, that even with me not liking this, the, the shades in general, like, I would never buy a palette full of pastels and neons. I need to have some balance. This one is executed very, very well. 
but it's missing something more deep. For example, the Blend Bunny Sugar and Sweet, no, not Sugar and Sweet, the Sickly Sweet palette, that is executed very, very well with the pastels, but it has mixed in a lot of deep shades to make them just work in any different kind of look. Formula-wise, honestly, this is not my favorite formula when it comes to eyeshadow. I struggled with every single palette, actually, in the looks, but the results, they were mind-blowing every single time. Doesn't matter if it was the full-on monochromatic look, the Harbinger look from the second one, or just have to check again here, this um, third look with a cyberpunk. I like them, so it, it's kind of weird. The formulation to me is just different from what I have seen from other brands, and right on the top of my head, do I have something I can compare this formula to? Not a lot, not a lot. The shimmers are, they're weird. Honestly, they're very weird in here because in the two really game-related palettes here, this the, the shimmer formulation is so weak when you swatch it, but as soon as you apply them with a brush, and you know I always use glitter glue underneath too, they just start to perform. They are not blinding, so do not expect a blinding, multi-chrome, shifty foil shade, but they are effectful and impactful and just look at this eye look of the two shimmers that are in here none of them look good swatched so this is the one that I have on the outer part and this is the one for the rest of the lid they look like nothing here on my arm but on the eye with the mats underneath and just blend it together they work so do these get now recommendation from my side Yes, they do. You do not have to have always super intense mattes, super pigmented dark mattes. You do not have to have always super intense shimmers. This is a very, very different kind of theming in the brand. I love gaming. It's totally up my vibe. And I just love that they are catching game vibes, for example, in these two palettes. That monochromatic purple one is an absolute monochromatic dream, and they have so many others in that elemental line. They have one, um, the fire one, I think. Is it fire? It's red. I was about to choose that, but then I was like, you can't choose that because you always choose something red, so let's go with something else. And I just had in a, I think it was on Instagram, a comment, someone telling me that the green version in this Elemental Blast one is one of their favorite green ones. So check them out. If you want to check them out and save some money, you can use my code Alakinkai. That will save you 10% of your order. It's an affiliate code. And the link that I've posted in the description box is also affiliated. So I'm very, very thankful that I was able to try out Game Beauty with PR. I'm very, very happy that they sent this to me and I kind of hope that after this review they still consider sending me PR because I really want to explore them further and not every formulation can be a favorite. That's just a fact and maybe everything that I said now is something that you are looking for in pals like that to just maybe join a more colorful life or to just get to know a indie brand but you just know you have maybe certain difficulties with other indie brands where the mats are just too punchy. For example, Blend Bunny Cosmetics, one of my faves, but the mats are intense. Like, they are freaking punching you in the face. And if you maybe are a beginner or you just don't like to put so much effort in blending out a super intense shade, this is a good way to just dig into indie brands, dig into colorful themings, and just do not have to hassle so much with blending. For my liking, they could have been a bit more intense, but I also don't mind working and building with them. So tell me please in the comments down below, which one was your favorite look, which one is your favorite palette, and which one would you like to try out from Game Beauty? I'm very, very curious what you think. And if you have tried Game Beauty, tell me what is your favorite product from them? I just so far now tried only the palettes, but I've seen that they have so much more. So make sure you subscribe, comment the answer to the questions. If you cannot answer the question or you don't want to, just comment something else. Um, Comment Cyberpunk, that helps too. So thank you as always, and I'll see you in the next one.